the kilt. Scotland's national dress. An ancient old skirt for men to be worn only at family weddings, Highland Games and clan gatherings. Think again. The kilt first appeared in the 16th century and was a full length garment in which the upper half could be draped over the shoulder as a cloak or over your head. Seems like a rather funny concept, doesn't it? There are several claims to the creation of a more modern day kilt, but certainly Thomas Rawlinson is a strong contender. It may come as no surprise that the idea of an Englishman influencing our national dress comes with a certain degree of controversy. In 1720, he created a kind of walking kilt, and his business partner, Ian MacDonnell, chief of the MacDonalds of Inverness, copied that look shortly after. And that's where it really started to catch on, with workers in logging, charcoal manufacture, and iron smelting, soon adopting the kilt as their work uniform. So where then comes the notion of being a true Scotsman? Well, the story goes that comes from World War I, where the regiment's senior officer would inspect under the kilt with a mirror and anyone seen to be wearing any underwear would be sent swiftly to the river. While it's clear that the kilt will continue to be worn at ceremonial occasions, at family weddings and by pipe bands, it's also evolving to become something more akin to a fashion symbol or something with which we can take a political or social stand. You can now even design your own tap. And that's evidenced by the fact that there are now tartans out there to represent Sikhism, the Barcelona football team, and even world peace. And all of this begs the question, why can't we wear the kilt for more everyday use? From city visits to music festivals, when walking your dog and carrying out the daily shop. Why can't that be a reality, I wonder? It is our national dress after all. Maybe we should embrace it a bit more drag it forward into the 21st century. I personally would love to see it being embraced more by all genders. You have to look only to modern day influencers and celebrities wearing kilts not just on the red carpet but in real life situations to see that it's something that could really catch on. Keith Lemon to Vin Diesel, Sir Richard Branson to Lenny Kravitz, Axel Rose, Snoop Dogg, Samuel L. Jackson and well if it's good enough for them, who are we to argue? Me? Well, for me, there's nothing quite like that feeling of wearing the kilt. It's the kind of outfit that makes people turn their heads and take note of. And I can't help but feel, whenever I wear one, it gives me that extra swagger, that extra spring in my step. Kilt has long been seen as Scotland's national dress, an integral part of our culture and heritage. But I wonder if now, is the time when we need to start thinking differently on it. Open our minds, embrace the kilt for what it really is. And while being a true Scotsman is all kinds of fun, be mindful that what is under there is none of your business.